Hello, my name is Mr. Butterick. I want to thank you for choosing the CDL Professor website to prepare yourself for the CDL permit test. Today I will be covering the material that may be on the test. You may want to follow along with the summary that corresponds to the endorsement that I am teaching. After this classroom session, we will go out to the field for the pre-trip inspection and coupling and uncoupling. Let's get started and thanks again for choosing the CDL Professor. We're going to start with the driving safely section in your CDL manual. Uh, first section is vehicle inspection. Okay, why do we do vehicle, uh, vehicle inspections? Um, we do it because it helps protect you and the other people on the road, keep your vehicle and uh, yourself safe. Uh, we look for vehicle defects that may become costly if they break down further. And also it's a federal and state regulation that you do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle. Types of inspection, of course, is the first one is a pre-trip inspection. <coughs> uh, and during this you'll uh, go completely over your truck and trailer and make sure that everything and all the components are safe. Okay? The next thing is a during a trip inspection. And when you're doing a during a trip inspection you want to watch your gauges for signs of trouble. You want to use your senses to check for problems. So you look, listen, smell, and feel and uh, check critical items when you stop. Get out of your truck and check your tires, wheels, and rims. Uh, check your brakes, check your lights, check your brake and electrical connectors to the trailer. Make sure your trailer is coupled properly. Uh, check your cargo securement if you can get to your c cargo. And an after trips uh, inspection report will sometimes be required of you and if you should do it anyway, whether it's required or not, and just go ahead and check uh, around your truck and make sure everything is in good shape. Okay, what to look for on your inspection? Okay, tire problems. If you got too much or too little air pressure in the tires, that can cause a problem. Bad wear on your tires, be aware of those. Remember, you have to have four thirty seconds of an inch on your front steer tires and two thirty seconds of an inch on the rest of your tires. Look for cuts or other damage. Uh, tread separation. Uh, dual tires that come in contact with each other can be uh, dangerous because it can cause a fire. Uh, mismatched tires, tire sizes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, radio and bias ply tires cannot be used together. Uh, cut or cracked valve stems. This may call leakage and, and flat tires. Regrooved, recapped, or retreaded tires on the front wheels of buses is prohibited. <coughs> When you look for your, at your wheels and your rim, uh, look and see if they're damaged in any way, if they're bent, if you have rust around the wheel nuts, may mean the nuts are loose, okay? And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, missing clamps, spacers, studs, or lugs can be a, a dangerous sign, okay? Look for uh, bent or cracked lock rings. Uh, look for rims that have been welded. This is not legal, okay? When you're looking at your brake drums, look for cracked drums. Remember, it can't be cracked more than half the friction surface of the drum. Look at your shoes and your pads. You want to check them for oil and grease. Uh, if they have that on them, they have to be replaced. <coughs> look for uh, the, de the pads being worn dangerously thin. Now you check your steering system defects, because that's important that you have control of your truck. Look for missing nuts and bolts and cotter keys. Check your uh, steering column, make sure it's not bent or have any uh, cracks in it. Uh, check your uh, steering gearbox and the steering gearbox reservoir. And also, you want to look at uh, your pitman arm, your drag link, your steering ring knuckle, and uh, your tie rod ends. And then check all the castle nuts and make sure the cotter keys are in place on them. Your steering wheel and it shouldn't have more than two inches of play or 10 degrees in a 20 inch wheel. So be sure and check that out thoroughly. Okay. Then uh, you want to move to your, your suspension system when you're under your hood and watching and check your spring hangers. You're looking at some to see if there's no bolts missing or any cracks in the spring hangers. Check uh, your leaf springs. Make sure there's none missing, cracked or broken or shifted. <coughs> um, if it's an air suspension truck, you want to make sure the bags are inflated, they're not cracked or leaking and then check your frame members, make sure there are no major cracks in them. Exhaust system defects are very, very important in trucks because that's your home. You're going to be sleeping in that truck probably. 
uh, if you got a broken uh, exhaust system or holes that are leaking, the carbon monoxide can get into the cab. It's very dangerous. Uh, look for loose or broken uh, clamps or missing parts. Look for tiny holes with soot trails around them. Look for missing nuts and bolts. Uh, make sure that your exhaust system isn't rubbing against uh, the gas tank or fuel tank. Your truck should contain emergency equipment. It consists of a fire extinguisher, it has a minimum of a BC rating, uh, spare electrical fuses and circuit breakers if the, depending on which the truck uses, and warning devices. Uh, there, you can use fuses, most people don't, they use triangles, and you'll have three reflective triangles. They have to be in good working order. Okay. <coughs> when you're uh, taking your, when you're hauling your load, you're taking this trip, uh, you want to do a, a inspections as you go, okay? So you should always be checking your instruments, your air pressure gauge, your oil temperature, oil pressure gauge, your water temperature, your uh, voltmeter, and always be checking your mirrors. You should check your mirrors every five to eight seconds. And look at your tires, look at your cargoes and cargo covers if you're flat bedding. Uh, check your lights that you can see in your mirrors. If you see, hear, smell, or feel anything that might mean trouble, check it out. Okay. Safety inspections. Uh, when you first start your trip, after about 50 miles, you should stop and just do a quick check and make sure everything's working right. And then try to stop every about 150 miles or three hours, whichever uh, comes first. And then, of course, after your trip is over, uh, do your after-trip inspection report and check out your truck and make sure it's good. Now, that way, you'll know you arrived there safely. Next thing we'll be covering is the basic control of your vehicle. <coughs> In order to drive your vehicle safely, you must have the skill to do it. So we're going to talk about accelerating, steering, stopping, and backing safely. Always fasten your seat belt. Apply the parking brake when you leave your vehicle. You don't want it rolling off. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about is accelerating. When you're at a stop sign, if you're on a slight grade, don't let that truck roll backwards because you might have somebody behind you and you're going to hit them. And then you're going to cause damage and, and maybe hurt somebody. Engage the clutch before you, you uh, let off the brake. And then release it slowly without it rolling back and give it a little gas and go forward. Uh, speed up smoothly. A rough acceleration can be hard on the drive chain. <clears throat> speed up gradually when the traction is poor like in rain or snow. Uh, take your foot off the accelerator if you lose traction. Okay, now steering, uh, you, you want to do everything in a truck, you want to do it smooth, and steering is no exception. When you turn a corner, turn smoothly. Hold the steering wheel firmly on each side of the wheel. <coughs> okay. Okay. And when you're, excuse me. When you're stopping, uh, you want to do the same thing. Air brakes grab a little faster than hydraulic brakes, so you have to get used to using these uh, air brakes. And put, push the pedal down gradually, control it for a smooth, safe stop, and clutch, put your clutch in when you're close to idle. Okay. Backing safely. This is one of the hardest things to learn in, uh, in truck driving, is backing a, a, a big trailer like this. And actually, the longer the trailer, the easier it is to back. Uh, you can't see behind your trailer. It's, so you, what you want to do uh, is avoid backing whenever you can. And if you're getting ready to back, uh, just follow a couple simple safety rules. Start in the proper position. Have your trailer and tractor lined up so you know where it's going to go. Uh, look at your path. Check it out. Make sure there's nothing in that pathway. Could be some old uh, skids or maybe a wheel chalk laying out there. Make sure you move it out of the way. Use mirrors on both sides. Look down both sides of your tractor and trailer. See where it's going. Uh, back and turn toward the driver's side whenever possible. If you do it the other way, you'll be blindsided. You won't be able to see where you're going. Use a helper whenever possible. And if you use a helper, always make sure that your hand signals are, are agreed upon. Uh, this is the main hand signal for stop in trucking. So when you do this, that means stop. Moving on. Uh, we're going to talk about shifting gears next. Uh, these uh, trucks, big trucks, have usually 10 speeds. Some of them have 13. Um, 
and you need to learn how to shift the gears. So correct shifting your gears is important. Uh, it can save you fuel and it save wear and tear on the transmission and the drive chain. Basic methods of shifting up. Okay, when you start out, you're going to start out in the low range in a lower gear. You could start out in second or third depending on how much of a load you have uh, and you're going to be double clutching as you shift up. And the, the process is you push your clutch in at the same time you move your gear shift into neutral. You let your clutch out and then you push it back in and move your gear shift into the selected gear. <coughs> what you're doing is letting that engine and transmission catch up the same speed so that the gears mesh smoothly. Double clutching requires practice. It's going to take you some time. When you get out on the road, you'll learn how to do that. Then another important thing about shifting is knowing when to shift. Okay, So use your engine speed um, to shift up, and it'll tell you RPMs, and watch your tachometer, and, uh, or you can use your road speed or your miles per hour to tell you when to shift up. And ultimately, you want to learn to use the sound of the engine. To let, it'll let you know when you should be shifting. Okay. Now, once you're up and you're running, you're going to have to eventually come down. So you want to learn how to downshift. The process is similar, but it's a little bit different. Uh, you're going to, when you get ready to downshift, you're going to release the accelerator and push in the clutch at the same time and put the gear shifts into neutral. Then you're going to let your clutch out. You're going to hit the accelerator for about three or 400 RPM, and then you're going to push the clutch back in and drop the gear shift into the gear you want. This takes a little practice. It's a little rough. Uh, at first, you'll probably grind some gear, and your instructor will say something funny like, you know, next year they're going to make those out of rubber so they won't make that sound. But uh, you'll get it because you'll practice. Uh, there are special conditions when you should downshift. Before you start down a hill, you should be in the proper low gear, or proper gear that you want to be in. Because once you start down a steep uh, grade with a, high, with a heavy load, you're not going to be able to downshift again. Because it won't let you, transmission won't. You'll never get the RPM up high enough to do it. So be sure you're in the proper gear when going down a hill. Same on a curve. If you're going to uh, go through a curve, a fairly sharp curve, um, get in the proper gear before you go through the curve because once you start into the curve, you want to accelerate slightly. That will help stabilize that truck as you go all the way through the curve. Okay, some trucks have uh, multi rear, I'm sorry, <coughs> some trucks have multi speed rear axles and aux auxiliary transmissions. Uh, this provides extra gears, and the switch is usually on the gear shift, right on the gear shift handle at the top. Uh. There are many different shift patterns. You have to get familiar with the shift patterns in the truck that you will be driving. And that's what our instructors are here for, to show you how to do it. Now, some trucks are, have automatic transmissions. Some companies use automatic transmissions in their trucks because they find that it saves fuel. Uh, not all trucks do it. But you have to remember, uh, even on an automatic transmission, uh, when you're going, getting ready to go down a grade, you want to be in the proper low gear on automatic because it will automatically shift up as your speed increases. And going down a grade, your speed is going to increase because of gravity. Okay. Some vehicles have retarders, or they're called jake brakes sometimes. There's four different types of retarders. retarders. There's the exhaust retarder, the engine retarder, the uh, electric retarder, and the hydraulic retarders. Okay. The trucks we have out here have jake brakes, or engine retarders. And you want to be uh, very careful about when you're using th these uh, devices because some municipalities have laws against them that have signs of, say, no jake brakes or no engine retarders. And you also want to be cautious when the road surface is slippery because these can cause your trucks, to, your rear wheels to break traction. Okay, that's uh, uh, it on that section. And now the next thing we're going to talk about is seeing. This is the, the uh, sense that you use the most. This is most, your most prominent uh, sense. And we're going to talk about how to do it properly in a truck. Uh, to be a safe driver, you need to know what is going on all the way around your truck. It's called your, your uh, space cu cushion. Okay? All drivers look ahead, but you need to look ahead far enough so that you can spot troubles coming up. Okay? You need to look ahead to make sure you have room to make move safely. 
Okay, how far ahead do you need to look is about 12 to 15 seconds. At highway speed, that's about a quarter of a mile. Now, if you're out where you can see further, you should look further ahead. And if you see anything going on uh, up there, you need to uh, start planning on what you may have to do to uh, get away from the hazard. Um, in the city, uh, 12 to 15 seconds can be as little as one block. Uh, recommend that you look ahead two or three blocks if you can when you're driving in a city. Pay attention, pay attention to things that are, that are uh, closer to you. Uh, shift your attention back and forth, near and far. Always be scanning with your eyes. Look for traffic. Uh, vehicles coming onto the highway, into your lane or turning can be a, a hazard uh, or a problem. Uh, if you look ahead and you see a, 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 a signal light that's been green for a long time, that's what we call a stale light and that could change before you get to it. So you want to start planning ahead that you may have to slow down and get ready to stop. Okay? So you also want to see to the size and rear of your truck. Uh, use your mirrors. Look around you. Make sure that you know what's going on. Make sure your mirrors are adjusted properly because if they're not, you're not going to be seeing all you need to see. Do regular checks on your mirrors. You should be checking your mirrors every five to eight seconds. More frequently when you're in the city and in, and in heavy traffic. <coughs> check your vehicle. Use your mirrors to check and see what you can on your, on your tractor trailer. You can see your tires, on your outside tires on your trailers. You can see your lights. You can see if there's anything going on back there that could be coming loose. So be sure and watch that closely. Special situations. Uh, check your mirrors frequently when you're going to make a lane change. Are you going to merge? Are you going to do tight maneuvers? Uh, always give the people behind you ample notice when you're going to change lanes. Make sure no one is alongside of you when you're changing lanes uh, or about to pass you. Make sure you have enough room to get into the slot. Uh, double check. Make sure your path is clear. On turns, because you've got a long vehicle and a trailer behind you, don't forget that you have to be careful and watch your trailer as you're coming around this turn so your trailer doesn't strike something on the side of the road. Tight maneuvers. Anytime you're driving in close quarters, check your mirrors often. Okay. Make sure you have enough clearance. Use your mirrors. Check them quickly, understanding what you see. Don't fixate on your mirrors because that can take your eyes off the road in front of you. <coughs> also, these trucks have several different mirrors. Some of them have fender mirrors. Some of them have a, a plain mirrors on the side and convex mirrors underneath them. If you look at your convex mirror, Underneath, you will see uh, objects in them. They seem smaller, so they will be actually closer than they appear in that convex mirror. Okay. So be sure and make sure you're safe uh, all the way around your truck as you're going down the road. Okay. The other thing you want to do when you're going down the road is tell people around you what you're going to do. So you want to signal your intentions and uh, tell them what you're going to do with your signal lights uh, in a turn. Three good, three good rules to use for turning signals is signal early, signal continuously, and don't forget to turn off your signal light because these trucks are not equipped with self-canceling signals. You have to do it yourself. When you're doing a lane change, put your turn signal on before changing the lanes and watch your mirrors. See whether there's a gap come up or if somebody's going to let you in. They'll usually flash your lights at you or, or you can see that they slowed down enough for you to slide over. When you have to slow down, you see something going on ahead of you and you start slowing down, you always got to figure there's somebody behind you right on your bumper. And a lot of times, uh, people tailgating you like that will get fixated on the end of your truck. So if you just tap your brake pedal lightly, it'll cause your brake light to flash and come on and get their attention. <coughs> okay, let's see here. Flash me to turn on your rear view. Don't direct traffic when you're out there. Don't turn your signal light on, try and tell somebody to come on around you or stick your arm out and wave them. Uh, that's not a good thing to do. Communicate your presence. Let people know where you are, that they're going around uh, when they're passing. Uh, it's legal. If it's legal, go ahead and tap your horn when you're going to pass somebody. Let them know that you're coming up on them and see, uh, so they can see you coming. Uh, don't flash your lights at them. It's, uh, it can be irritating and it can... Uh, blind them, especially at night. Uh, make sure you run with your lights on. 
and usually uh, use your low beams. You don't need brights in the daytime. Uh, and your identification and, clear and your uh, clearance lights, make sure they're on. Uh, when parked on the side of the road, and you pull off on the road to stop, be sure you turn on your four-way emergency flashers. Uh, don't trust the taillights. Somebody may think you're still moving and run into the rear of you. <coughs> you got, uh, you've got 10 minutes after you pull over to the side of the road to set out your uh, warning devices. This would be your uh, three triangles. And there's a, a guideline for setting these out. If you're on a two, or a, I'm sorry, if you're on a, a divided highway and you're parked on the shoulder, uh, you want to put the first triangle 10 feet behind your truck, the next one 100 feet behind, and the next one 200 feet behind. Now remember, that's on a divided highway. If you're on a two-lane road where you have traffic coming uh, towards you and from behind you also, you want to put the triangle, uh, first triangle 100 feet out in front of your truck, the next uh, one behind at 10 feet, and one behind that at 100 feet. Make sure that the people see you on both ways. <clears throat> if you're parked on, a, uh, on the back side of a sharp hill or a sharp corner, uh, you want to put one triangle um, out in front of you, one 10 feet behind you, and one within 100 to 500 feet behind your truck. So people that can't see your truck uh, can see this triangle and know that something's going on up ahead. Use your horn only when needed. Um, and be sure that it's legal to honk it. You have two horns on your truck. You got a city horn, beep, beep, and you got an air horn, you know, the big one, you can see them. Um, use it sparingly. Uh, I don't think I ever use my air horn except when the little kids come by in their cars and, and uh, want me to do it for them and it gives them a big charge. Oh, what the heck. Um, if you use that air horn, it can startle drivers and cause them to do something silly and dangerous, okay? So, the other thing about uh, driving safely uh, is controlling your speed. You want to um, make sure that you're going the speed limit or less than and uh, don't, don't speed because speed is a major cause of almost all the crashes out there and rollovers and that's very dangerous. Uh, you can lose traction on curves and uh, on downhills. Okay? Stopping distance um, in your truck, you got a big vehicle here. It's, uh, it can be up to 80,000 pounds. And the stopping distance is uh, comprised of three components. It's the perception distance. That's the distance that your truck travels from the time that your eye sees it, the, the danger, and tells your brain. And the reaction distance is the time that your truck travel, or the distance your truck travels when uh, your brain see, recognizes it and then tells your foot to step on the brake. And the braking distance is the distance your truck travels uh, after you hit the brakes. Okay? And if you look at the chart on figure 2.11, uh, you'll see the different speeds and how far it takes to stop that vehicle. Braking distance uh, on your vehicle will travel in ideal conditions while you are braking at 55 miles per hour is roughly 216 feet, just the braking distance alone. Total stopping distance is will, in that same speed will be about 419 feet to stop that rig. That's under ideal conditions, so make sure you know that if the conditions aren't ideal, and that means your road, your truck, and you, uh, that you want to start slowing down a little earth, especially if you got rain or, or slickness on the roads. Uh, the effect of uh, speed on stopping, uh, if you double your speed, your, uh, uh, your distance will go up four times. If you triple your speed, it will go up nine times. And if you quadruple your speed, it's going to go up 16 times. So you've got to be really careful about your speed. And also, the severity of the impact is the same am amount, four, uh, nine, and 16 times. The effect of weight on your vehicle is, uh, is, is kind of counterintuitive because you would think that a lighter or an unloaded vehicle would stop quicker than a loaded vehicle. It won't. Uh, a heavier vehicle will stop sooner uh, than a heavily or than an unloaded or an empty vehicle. That's because the suspension system on your tractor and trailer is uh, stiff and it's set up for heavy loads. And also when you're light you don't get the traction or the, the, the down pressure on the road surface that you would if you had a load on. Okay. 
So braking is very critical about controlling your speed and you want to be very aware of that. Okay, matching the speed to the road surface. Um, traction is friction between the tires and the road. And if you lose traction, uh, you're going to have a problem. You got to remember that slippery surfaces will make your vehicle, will take your vehicle longer to stop. So you want to be careful when the roads are slippery, slow down and uh, by a third of your speed if it's wet and by about half if it's uh, snow covered and if it's icy, slow down to a crawl and find a place to get off safely where you can park so you won't be in any danger. Look for signs uh, that the road surface may be slippery, like uh, shaded areas where trees are always covering the, the uh, road. <coughs> bridges, they, bridges freeze before roadways in the wintertime especially. Melting ice, uh, as ice melts, here's your road surface. And here's your ice surface on top of it. And as ice melts, it melts from the top down. So you'll have water laying on top of your ice. That makes it even more slippery. So you've got to be really careful about that. Uh, black ice, that's an ice that you can actually see right through to the surface of the road. And uh, it looks like it's just wet, but it's really icy. Uh, the way you can, uh, another way you can check to see if it's icing outside is just roll down your window and touch the front of your mirror, your side mirror, and see if there's ice building up on it or watch your windshield wipers. Uh, roads are especially slippery right after rain starts because it lifts the oil that's been spilled on the road up to the surface and makes it really slippery. Okay, <clears throat> Hydroplaning is when your tires lose contact with the road surface under wet or slushy conditions because your f speed is too fast uh, for conditions. And what happens is when you hydroplane your tires actually come off the surface of the road. This is the surface of your road right here. And your tire would normally be riding there. When it hydroplanes, you got water, and the tire actually comes off the road and rides on top of the water. And this can cause, cause it to slide and be slippery, put you in danger. Uh, taking a curve too fast can cause the tires to lose traction and skid. Uh, that's pushing the vehicle straight ahead. Uh, braking in a curve is dangerous, so slow to a safe speed and remember, be in the proper gear before you enter the curve. Okay, Fog, rain, and snow requires that you slow down so you're able to stop within your seeing distance. You want to, you want to be aware of your speed and the distance ahead of you. Uh, the safest speed uh, when you're uh, in heavy traffic is the speed of the other vehicles around your vehicle. Uh, drive at the speed of traffic. Uh, you want to be careful because um, when in heavy traffic, uh, things can happen that we, uh, can get you into trouble rapidly. Okay, when you're on speed on downgrades, uh, your speed will increase on downgrades because of gravity. Uh, you need to uh, select the right gear and th the way you do that uh, and help maintain your speed and control your vehicle is to take into the factors the total weight of your vehicle and your cargo, the length of the grade, the steepness of the grade, road conditions and the weather. Uh, if a speed limit is posted or there is a sign indicating maximum speed, um, that's, you don't want to exceed that. You always want to select a safe speed. It may not be the, uh, the speed limit that's posted. Uh, when you're going down the hill, use your brake uh, you get to safe speed, step on your brake and lower your speed to about five miles per hour below that, release your brake, let it come back up to the safe speed again, and then repeat. That will help you maintain control going down the road. Okay. <coughs> when you're out driving, you're going to encounter a lot of work zones. And you want to make sure that you observe the posted speed limits at all times when approaching and driving through a work zone. Be careful because there's always workers around them, heavy machinery. Uh, decrease your speed uh, in work zones if there's adverse weather. Get below this posted speed limit. Okay. 